Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Republic of Sarah. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, this episode is about... Uh, Greylock shifting its currency because slowly but surely everyone starts noticing the more everyone uses their uh, their cards or whatever, the more like they're getting uh, fees, you know. And it turns out it's because they are technically their own country now, so any any like outside like fees are being considered um, what is it foreign fees? So. Um, and eventually, it's like what three, wasn't it like three percent or something like that? And I think that's kind of the point, or like three bucks, whatever the case may be. That no, I think it's three bucks. That fee starts racking up the more and more you use your card. So it's like, all right, we're gonna have to find a way around this, like fee. So uh, Sarah comes to the conclusion, why not make their own currency? Um, obviously, it comes with its pros, but it also comes with its cons. The biggest con being like, if this doesn't work, then Greylock's entire uh, economy could go bankrupt, but you know, because you know, that's obviously a conversation Sarah has with William later on. But it's like obviously I didn't know that Norway apparently. Well, basically, it's about using your resources because it's like how they are able because the U.S. was able to back their currency with gold. They're going to use coltan to back their currency. So, but William talked about like they're obviously being one particular. A nation that did try to do that and it went belly up, but then apparently Norway backed itself on its um, resources and ended up coming out and being one of the uh, because isn't like I think in that because um, isn't uh, Sweden and Norway in that same regard? Well, I'm, I'm probably confusing Sweden with other aspects. I know there's certain. I feel like Sweden has like a really good economy, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I, I never heard that about Norway. I think I'd heard that about. Well, it's Sweden and Norway. I'm I'm so ignorant to like where the lo the geological location of so many places around the world. So do excuse my ignorance. I I am an idiot. Do do, do keep that in mind. Regardless, I just thought that was just an interesting thing. I'm like, oh, I just you know. Um, but all that aside, uh, getting a, a new currency flowing when people have lived their entire life knowing one currency, like knowing U.S. currency in particular, it's kind of hard to get people on that bandwagon. I mean, it is pretty dope to be able to design your own currency. I mean, like, when you do look at, like, other nations' currencies and stuff like that, it's like, oh, it's actually pretty dope, like, especially because it's like, oh, I mean, it's coming from someone who's just used to, like, uh, I mean, I'm sure every other country is like that, but like, oh, my God, you're... Oh, that country's currency is weird just because you've grown up your entire life knowing one thing. Like, I've known, like, American dollars in, like, to be green the way they are. Um, or, like, you know, like, quarters and pennies and dimes and nickels. Like, it's that, like, you know, it's so, and then you, like, look at other countries where it's like, oh, their bills are colorful and stuff like that. And it's, just, it's such a weird thing because it is such a foreign thing because it's like, right, you grow your entire life. I've lived... 20 plus years, because I mean, I don't know when I was old enough to recognize the concept of money, which is really interesting, because then people will break you down, break it down to be like, obviously currency is just a man construct, uh, construct of man, because it's like, yeah, it's just a piece of paper that we just attribute value to. That's a, that's a whole conversation in itself, but it's still just like, without even going that deep on it, just on a surface level of like, man, it's just crazy, like, what money looks like in different countries. I'm going on a whole tangent, but... Being able to design your own money, getting to dictate who gets put on the money, I'm so, that could also turn into an interesting conversation. Like, whoa, 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 whoa! Since we're, since we're doing that, like, uh, how about I vote myself on the money? Like, you know, vote to put my own face on the money and stuff like that. I know it's just, it's just interesting to think about. Which the whole thought of that, like, kind of makes me think about. Oh, kind of gets me thinking about, like, you know, video game money, like Kingdom Hearts. Money's literally called monies. Um, and then you have like, you know, the one I always associate with like video game money Gil from the Final Fantasy universe that's their currency it just, it just kind of gets me thinking about that like it's tangents and all that aside um, 
But obviously, like I said, it you know everyone's kind of you know getting Maya and Tyler and Bella to help because it's also a conversation. Because I love what kind of stems from all of this too is that Sarah's trying to handle a lot on her own, which is like, no, I thought you there was no more like us. I thought it was kind of a we thing, and it's like she's like it is, but she's still a bit of a control freak herself, which which I think when we because a big part of that is her personal life is the reason why she's like that. We'll get to that soon enough, but like the fact that she wants to kind of handle everything on her own, it's like oh, I kind of got things started, but. You, you, Obviously, guys, we're in this together, so you guys handle things. So when she's dealing with everything from mom this episode, um, Grover, AJ, as well as Corinne have to kind of shift and take control of things so that she like she has to learn how to kind of let go. As Grover puts it later on, it's like, nah, you didn't just like gracefully let go. We had to pry this away from your um, your stubborn ass. Like, you know, like we had to push you away from this for you to finally at least loosen your grip at least a little bit. But, um, because, like I said, initially not everyone jumped on it. In fact, people were going to the bank to pull all their money out because they got scared. I mean, it's something new. It's like, what if this currency doesn't work? Um, and I love the different ideas of, like, you know, while uh, Sarah was away trying to figure out, like, okay, how do we incentivize people to actually take this Greylock money? It's like, so what do we do? Um, which I also love that they are thinking, like, oh, yeah, what do we call ourselves? Do we call, like, uh, Grey Lynch kind of, like, French? Grey Lockians, like what? What's their uh, names? You know, uh, going to be like now that we're like you know our own country and stuff like that. But um, I love that Corinne the entire time is focused on the toasters and stuff like that, which I love. Even nature, it's like, what's up with you and the toast? She keeps like, like literally tears of like the the tears of like, oh yeah, you exchange this much money, you put yourself in a position to get this particular toaster or this even better toaster or this better toaster. And it's like, what, what's up with you keep referencing? I guess she just loves toast or something. That's just, I think that's so funny. Um, but ultimately what ended up giving them the what they needed was basically to close every shop down. Because Diego's shop already kind of went under because of everything going on. But they kind of show people like, right, uh, a, um, Grover learned from AJ because it's like, right, you do, I'm not AJ, but uh, Diego, when he was like, yeah, um, you don't realize what you got until it's gone. And so they had every store closed down and made the citizens of Greylock realize, like, if they don't buy into the money, like, they had their own fears of how things are going to turn out. But if you don't buy into Greylock's currency, this is what's going to happen to the economy. So that fear made them go, like, you know, like, realizing, like, oh, this is what the aftermath could be if we don't step in and do this now. So they all bought into the first, like, run of the currency and stuff like that. And obviously... It doesn't stop there. The conversation is like, all right, well, we get to, you know, other countries get to design their own, like, other currency. Not everything is just one thing. So, you know, they're trying it out, like, having a contest to see who gets it. Once again, that's pretty dope because the whole point is, like, it's not a, um, us, just a small part of it. It's like we're all in this together, so we should all decide together, like, what the currency should be like. And even um, Sarah showing Grover a piece of currency, it's like, right, there were two houses that had to be demolished to get us here, so let's not forget uh, once again, I feel kind of bad for that other person because, I mean, I, I get it for the context of the show. Grover's the character we know, so we need to kind of more so associate, but it's just kind of funny. Like, it's more so focusing, like, we don't actually even know who the other person is whose house got taken out. It's mainly because it's like Grover's one of the main characters, so we're going to focus on him. I mean, because we, I mean, to be fair, it's like, right, we're kind of seeing the lives of some characters intersplitting here and there, but obviously it's like the main characters we're focused on, and I think the storylines of like other characters in towns, like probably some characters will become more regular characters that exist in the background, but that's the whole thing about a town full of townspeople. You never get to know every single citizen. It's like the show Haven. There's probably a lot more people with troubles, um, with, you know, afflictions in Haven, but you only get to know the ones that pop up in the story. You don't get to know every citizen by name. A lot of those were just like one-off uh, season episode episode character. Like, I, I'm, you know, that's just like, that's just storytelling where it's just like, there's a lot of background characters that don't necessarily have to be like recurring or mainstay characters to a certain extent. It's just something interesting to think about. But uh, it, it's pretty uh, dope that, um, Grover's house, like, you know, it's like, right, to remember that it's being like, uh, memorialized on like um, on the, the currency that way no one ever forgets you know and she's like but I'm only going to do this if it's okay with you and he's like no it's perfect you know and I, I thought that was pretty dope um, so that was kind of an interesting development um, tying this all together there's other you know elements of just with this whole thing with the currency going on there's also other elements like 
Corinne and Danny's relationship. Obviously, it's like, you know, Corinne's son, Josh, like, he's kind of all about bees now, so he wants to wear a bees outfit to school and stuff like that, which I think, you know, that's that's okay. Those are kids. Like, because apparently, like, he's in, like, first grade anyway, so it's like, that's what kids do. It's like, right, they find, like, a specific outfit that they like and they wear it. Like, you see even commercials of it. It's like, oh, this little girl likes wearing her, like, cowboy or princess outfit all the time. Like, it's that type of thing, which is like, oh. But also, kids suck, so he kind of gets bullied for it and stuff like that, even to a point someone pulls off one of his wings. Um, and I think he has a conversation with Danny about it, and I think that made him probably feel better about it, but obviously Corinne didn't appreciate that. She even kind of rips into Danny for it. But later on, um, Josh was able to convince another one of his classmates that nah we're um uh nah like he makes him realize like how dope bees are so now other people in his class other kids in his class are now wearing bee costumes of their own so he kind of led as he says his swarm um because that's what bees are and not hives um so i i, I just thought that was like a pretty dope pr pr pretty cute element to the episode but kind of circling with the whole danny and Corinne thing, because obviously Grover is his next door neighbor now. It's like, because like the volume is really high. He's like, oh, well, I didn't know you were saying. He's like, right, remember? My house is being bulldozed by lighted. He's like, right. Uh, I got a point, no more. Could you turn it? And Grover's just looking at him like, really, bro? And he just, in fact, turns the volume higher. But then later on, they're actually hanging out, having beers. I'm like, oh, that's actually pretty dope. He's like, yeah, sorry. I was kind of a dick the other night. And it's like, no, it's good. Um, but then, like, obviously for him, he talks about the whole Corinne thing, but Grover's like, yeah, but, yeah, like, I get it, you probably had your reasons, but you left Corinne, like, you weren't here to see the aftermath of it, like, she couldn't eat, she wouldn't sleep, like, we were worried she'd never be okay, like, yeah, she's okay now, and it's easy for you to be like, oh, like, oh, I can't believe she's not over it, it's like, no, you broke her, dude, like, you didn't, you didn't, you weren't here to kind of be there when the pieces had to be picked up, but like, you know, it's like, so she's tearing your head off is because you kind of deserve it, because that's the problem, though, because he never had any intentions of ever coming back to Greylock, but Danny never thought about what would be left in the wake, in the aftermath of what he did, you know? And so later on, he's talking to Sarah, too, because Sarah's dealing with the whole thing with her mom. Her mom is actually like, no, I'm not giving up on my sobriety. I'm not giving up on meetings. I just think I need rehab. And she's like, oh, that's great, mom. But the rehab she's going to, as she kind of says, is basically like a hippie commune. She doesn't think her mom will actually get the legit help she needs just because in her mind, it's like she believes she knows what's best because she's like, no, 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 these facilities, this, this isn't like, no, this isn't how, you know, it's like the path to sobriety, it, you know. I think is different for everyone. You know, I'm sure like for her, it's kind of interesting. And I think that's kind of the whole point where so many people are kind of stuck in there where they're like, whoa, whoa, new currency. Whoa. You know, she was the same way where she was just kind of like, yeah, there's this uh, foundation of like, you know, structure of how rehab should work. And my mom wants to kind of go to this weird one. And it's like, she was kind of stuck in her own ways as well. Like kind of her fear was kind of getting in bed of her because she was kind of, you know, worried that like if her mom, when like she would more likely fail at this place she wants to go to rather than any other place danny kind of threw it out there of like yeah but you're kind of like the fixer of the family like are you kind of are you, you've been the one holding mom up for so long that maybe there's a part of you that is a little worried that she won't that she'll get better and she won't need you as much anymore which she's like well, I'm sorry, Danny. She had to rely on me because no one else was there. You up and disappear. So why don't you do what you bet do best and just do it again? Like she kind of chewed him out a little bit, rightfully so. Which he ultimately ends up apologizing. He apologizes to Corinne about everything. He's like, I did. For him, it's like it's hard for him to be around her because it's like, right? I. It is kind of sad to see. Like I, I'm a little confl heartbroken because like I am glad that you are so happy that you are okay. But at the same time, it is kind of. You know, sad because it's like because you are so happy without me in your life, and for him it's like with everything going on, I just needed to get out of I just need to get out of gray. Like, you know, with my mom and the drink, and she's like, she's like, I completely understand. I just want to know what happened that night. So it seems like everything shifted on a specific night. Like I guess the night he left, something happened, and then he's like, I because she's like she's been wondering this entire time. It's like I need to know what happened. He's like I. You, I know you deserve that answer, but I can't give it to you. And she's like, you can't or you just won't. She's like, you know what? Thanks for reminding me, Danny, why I hate you so much. And that's the thing. Because I, 
to, but that's the thing. We don't. We weren't there. We you hear about it, but we didn't see it firsthand. Of just what Corinne went through, the devastation that was kind of left in the wake, you know. And because for Corinne, it's like you were my everything, and then, you know that's the sad thing. Once again, a thing to note. Like she probably, I don't know. Think she she. It was probably like both emotionally, maybe mentally, and a little physically. That was kind of like she meant that literally, you know. Because um, that's just a thing too. Like that's a lesson I had to kind of learn. Like right. Don't make someone your everyday. I made a girlfriend, an ex of mine, my everything, and it kind of broke me for a couple years. Nothing on her part. It's just me. It's just like because of what I did, I kind of latched on and kind of like made my entire world revolve around her. So once again, hard lesson I had to kind of learn the hard way. So, so I don't know. Like I said, you know, I'm not trying to compare my circumstances to Corinne because we don't know the full state of circumstances, but it definitely seems like there's more to Danny's story. And it's just like, for whatever reason, he just doesn't want to talk about it. it must I, I don't know. There definitely has, there's definitely more to it. What that might be, we'll ultimately have to wait and see. Ultimately, you know, this whole thing with um, Sarah's mom and everything, dropping her off, you know, because her mom made her realize, like, right, trusting your friends. Like, the fact is that you, like, you might not remember it, but, like, yeah, you can be a little, like, having a hard time of letting go, but, like, every step of the way, your friends are kind of always there to help you and support you. Like, no one has a better group of friends than you do. Like, if you're going to put your trust in anyone, it would be these friends of yours who've had your back throughout these different moments of your life. Despite everything, they were there to help you from the smaller things to the bigger things. Like, they are there, you know? And that actually becomes a motto in us we trust because, you know, it's all about Greylock as a community. Like, we're in this together type of thing. So, um, but with her mom, like her mom is worried about failing, but you know, for Sarah, it's like, yeah, you might, but at the very least, you know, but you might also succeed as well. I mean, that's, I mean, I think that's every aspect of life. Like you, it, it's scary to take, take a leap, you know, especially as a mom say kind of out of her comfort zone, but it's like, you know, the, you know, this is her chance. Like she's gotten this far. All she has to do is keep, you know, kind of basically one step at a time type of situation. So, you know. And for Sarah, you know, this whole circumstance got her to learn how to kind of let go a little bit. She's not the biggest fan of this place and everything, right? But, you know, um, she she doesn't necessarily believe in this place, but she is trusting in her mom. Because even her mom asked her early in the episode, it's like, you don't trust the place, but you trust me, right? And she's like, mom. And it's like, oh, so you don't have much trust in me. But now she's like, no, 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 I do have trust in you, mom. So I, I hope this place is able to kind of... Uh, make you better but um later on there's this kind of like really devastating conversation between sarah and danny where like sarah went over to turn off like their mom's like water and um gas while um she's away at rehab and danny's there sitting beside her you know and he kind of apologizes um for kind of what he had said before um because it is true that he did kind of leave so it was kind of on sarah to look after their mom but then Sarah opens up about like how, and I I think it's like a very powerful moment because for her it's she's so conflicted because she's like because of what mom did I want to like bounce her head against the pavement like I mean like what she did to you what she put you through like but at the same time when I look at her I also see the mom that was there cheering for me at like my sports like being a mom and for her it's like this. You know, confliction between like, how can all of that, the terrible person that did all that stuff to you and yet the sweet, loving mom be in the same person? And that's a sad side of humanity, like that we are capable of just so much good like that, but also some sadness. Like, it's, it's a lot. And I think, I think, because for Sarah, it's all she had because like, for her, it's like their dad had left, their mom, um, Danny had left, and it's like her mom was the only family she had. So it's like, so for her, she hates herself for not hating her mom as much as she should. She's like, I because it, like you hate mom, and like I should hate her as much as you do too, but I can't, and I hate myself for not like for feeling that way because it's like regardless of everything, she was she she was a mom, you know, and. And she, because I think for her, she feels like by not hating their mom as much as she's doing, she's kind of betraying her brother, considering everything that he went through because of their mom. I think, you know, I think, and I think that also stems why Danny kind of did what he did too. Because, like, the sad thing is, like, 
it's not the same thing, but obviously that has like a lot of, I'm sure maybe that plays a role in why he did what he did, because there might be a lot of cycle, it might not just be physical scars, I mean, we're not, we, we definitely was not just physical scars, there's a lot of psychological scars because of everything he went through, so, but that's also what, like, the sad thing is, like, what that can, the, what that can ultimately do to you and your personality and how you live your life, like, because sad, like, that, what he went through that abuse could like manifest itself in many different ways that were you know that maybe like I said maybe some of those ways are why he ended up leaving Corinne and just kind of bailed and disappeared for like six years out of their lives and everything I don't know it's definitely going to be interesting to see how that ultimately all ends up you know uh, shaking out but like you know I love that moment of Danny being like well mom's not the only family you have I think this break away from her mom, like, just kind of, like, it just, because that's why I also thought it was kind of interesting, like, she took, like, if you notice over the course of, like, these couple episodes, like, in, she makes small shots against her mom, it's still a thing of, like, right, I'm here for you, but I'm also going to put you in your place to let you know, like, right, Dan, like, last episode being, like, Danny shouldn't have to forgive you, like, you know, the scars are, he, you gave him her there for the red, like, keeping it super blunt with her mom, so it's, like, that confliction has been there the entire time. She's just been able to kind of hold it back. And now that her mom's kind of away because her mom's kind of like the only family she had to latch on to. It's like, now I'm kind of alone. I don't have any family left. But it's like, no, I'm like, she's not the only family you have. You got me, sis. You know, I'm back in your life. You know, they're repairing their relationship despite everything with, you know, the complications with their mom. You know, so I just thought that was kind of, that whole scene was just very powerful in its own right, I think. Um... And speaking of relationships, we got two other relationships over the course of the episode. Uh, you know, there's the Bella and Tyler thing. Obviously, her dad pushing more and more. Like, obviously, she is, like, there's no getting around the whole, like, yeah, she's having to go to boarding school thing. And that's that's kind of sad, you know, because, like, her and Tyler, they're, like, carving their names. But then they're looking at all these other things of, like, oh, this particular relationship. Oh, that didn't work out. Oh, here's Danny and Corinne. Oh, but they didn't work out. It's like, yeah, but most of these relationships are, you know, because so-and-so was a douche. And it's like, yeah, in Danny's case, yeah, he's kind of a douche. So it's like, you know, but it's like, you know, the whole thing of like, oh, but it'll work out somehow. And you're like, oh, dude, young, for one, young love. But also at the same time, it's like, because we've all been in that position. I've been in that position. I've, I've been in, you know, not just long distance relationships. I've been in long distance relationships as a teenager. Those are tough. They're, they're, they're tough at any age, but definitely as a teenager. Um, because also it's that thing of, like, as a teenager, you want to believe, like, oh, everything will work out. I mean, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Because, like, sometimes people end up, you know, marrying their high school sweetheart. In other cases, even when they do, it doesn't always work out. I mean, relationships in general don't always work out, you know? And I think, you know, the... You know, it's better to have loved than lost to never have loved at all type of thing, right? But I think it's like every relationship you're in is an important part of developing who you are because it's, you know, it's a whole thing. I legitimately got this from a Tyler Perry, like, play from years ago, like one of his movies where it's like some people are in your life for um, a season. They're just meant to come into your life to kind of teach you something and then, like, you carry that on with you in your future relationships and your future life. Like, there's just some people that are meant to be in your life forever. Other people are just meant to be in your life for, season, you know, a few seasons or whatever. Or just, you know, it was, it was just inter that that is That mentality has always stuck with me, being like, oh, yeah, like, every... Every aspect of life is a learning experience, and you carry that on with you. It is kind of sucking when things don't work out, but you carry that on with you, and, um... There's just certain lessons that you were supposed to learn. This person's in your life to teach you these lessons and just move on. You just kind of let them go when the time's right, you know, for both of you. You know, hopefully things end more amicably and it's not kind of uh, nasty as some breakups or even divorces can be. It, it's a whole thing. So it just, it kind of got me thinking about that as well. Once again, we're talking about teenagers, so it's a little bit different because it's like, oh, you know, but like, you know, even, like I said, even romances in high school can lead places in your future. And as you get older, turn into an adult, it's just the whole thing. Um, but I think for Bella, like, you know, she's even talking to her stepmom Alexis and it's like the whole thing about like, you know, it's like, oh, you can't live two lives, which uh, obviously she's talking from experience, but you know, for Bella, it's like, but 
it's not two lives, it's two towns. But she's like, are you trying to convince me or are you trying to convince yourself? Because she's trying to be like, no, no, it's all going to work out. It's going to be okay. Like, they've been just saying that the entire time. Not, you know, not trying to let the fear kind of get to them. And then, obviously, it's like, oh, they're in the back of the car. It's like, oh, we, are we, like, Bella kind of wants to, but then Tyler kind of doesn't want that. And it's like, because he explains it later on. It's like, right, I wanted our first time to be special because I love you. I didn't want it, like, I mean, like, no way anyone's going to deny, like, having sex in the backseat of the car or anything like that. But it's like, nah, I just, I wanted our first time to be special. And then, like, other times, if we wanted to, we could have sex in the back of the car. But, you know, and I think, you know... Because it, it was kind of sad to see, like, things kind of end up. I think for her, it's like, right, this is going to be my last night here. I wanted it to kind of, I wanted it to be something special. Because, like, for her, like, Tyler's hesitancy made her feel like, whoa, this isn't, so this isn't what you want. So maybe this isn't as important to you. Is it because you think we're not going to last? Like, I think it is that thing of, kind of as like Danny was talking about, like, right, I was kind of, um projecting my issues onto you. Like, I think that was kind of like Bella's own doubts, like, she was kind of like uh reflecting those off of tyler and i think it's just she just like it, it's one of those things where you kind of like um kind of deflect yourself onto someone else and kind of it's like right their behavior is like right it just confirms what you're already feeling a little bit but you know it's like no like we'll make this work it's like i love you i love you too so i'll call you in the moment i get there so they're gonna try and make it work uh, it's that it's that once again young love and everything and a long distance relationship you're like it's gonna be tough you're kind of like hey you're rooting for him but at the same time you're like yeah you also have to think about the realism of like right it is kind of a thing of yeah you might be a different town and stuff like that but you are gonna have two different lives it's like right she's gonna end up getting new friends um he's gonna keep staying here like you know I mean, could you also hope, like, Bella and Maya are able to kind of keep their friendship and everything, because they, how they've grown over the course of these few episodes as well, you know, so, just a lot of that stuff, but the other relationship you have to think about is the whole AJ and Alexis thing, um, you know, the glances in choir, and it's like, oh, no, people aren't going to think too much, they're just going to think, like, oh, it's my passion for this, that is why I'm staring at you, um, then hooking up in her office was pretty wild, um, it's like, oh, that thing you do with your tongue, I'm like, whoa, that thing you do with your fingers, whoa, okay, okay, uh, hot and spicy, huh, that's, no, it's just like, it's like, I, I guess, because once again in my head, I'm like, all right, I didn't, I forget, it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, they're gonna talk like that, just because it's like, yeah, I think, I think in my head, I'm, I, I, when it comes to sex and stuff like that on TV, I'm like, oh yeah, just kind of, I think like, I feel like in my head, I always associate that with like a, um, like a network that might actually show you sex or something like an HBO or like a Showtime or a Stars or something like that. So I guess like when I hear like a, just a TV show like on the, like the CW talk, I'm like, oh, it kind of like draws me back because I'm like, oh, I'm just because I think in my head I have a very like old school mind of thinking like, oh, they don't talk like that on TV. It's like, oh, of course they do. Like that, the, the way people talk on television has shifted a lot over the years. Regardless, it just it was just it was like, oh, that's <laughs> that I wasn't expecting that. Um, but then they almost get caught, and that in itself comes up with ish starts reflecting some issues because for AJ it's like right later on when you came in with your family thing, it's like you didn't even want to look at me it's like people know we're friends it's not like we have to just like completely like you don't have to pretend like I don't exist but she was like it scared her because it's like we almost got caught and it's like he's and you know AJ and I think that's the saddest line of like I know what's between us is limited that's also the thing too I'm like I get like you got something special here but I'm also like hey you should be able to like be with someone out and open like you shouldn't your entire relationship like, shouldn't have to be, like, a secret, like, she should find someone, like, and that's also the thing, like, you know, and maybe that's gonna be a conversation that comes up later on, if, like, right, like, if, she, if she's either all in or she isn't, like, I think AJ's not trying to give her an ultimatum, because it is a thing of, like, I enjoy what we have, like, we hit it off, and, you know, but that, that was what AJ was worried about, I don't want to just be a warm body that you, like, cuddle up to, I, I want to, I want it to be, like, I want to feel like I matter to you. I don't, you know, like, I, you've made me feel a lot of things before. I just never thought cheap would be one of them. But then, you know, now uh, Alexis is acting as, she's working as the receptionist at the police station. So it's like, they'll definitely be seeing each other more often. So it's like, it's kind of like, okay, it's nice. But at the same time, I'm like, uh, you know, you'd rather AJ be with someone else where it's not so complicated, where you have to, like, circle around the fact is that you're like you're having this secret affair like you're just kind of like yeah like you should be able to like 
be with someone, be able to have public displays of emotion. It's like you shouldn't have to hide, have to hide your relationship. But it's like, well, she she is married and everything, so I, you know, obviously you have to hide it. But still, it's like you know. So I think that's going to be a shift we see later on in the season. I don't. I, sadly, I don't think it's going to last. I think it is going, especially because Corinne knows. Like, I, you can tell the way Corinne's like, oh, I'm gonna yeah, be back, be back there in an hour, sweetie. You, you know, and it's like right. I, I feel like I was like she she figured it out. And is she the only one? Because now I know Alex, I know AJ's going to be worried because it's like, right, if Corinne was able to find out, to be fair, Corinne's one of your best friends, so of course she's going to see through it. But it's like, if that's the case, like, who else knows? Does, does, does Grover know? Does Sarah know? Like, you know, who else is going to find out? Like, that's also something she's got to probably be worried about because it's not just her. It is on, a, like, it's Alexis too. Like she even said, I'm not trying to blow up your life, you know? So it's going to be interesting to see where all of this ultimately ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.